We are coming to a new series. Once again, I love doing series. And uh, in this series, we're going to be talking about purpose, of course. But I want us to talk about the seven ways you can take action in your purpose pursuit. The human being doesn't have a problem in taking action. The problem with our action taking is that sometimes, or maybe even most of the times, it is not necessarily effective. We can do all the things that we are doing, but then in the end, in the very end, it wasn't effective. We regret. Regrets. The problem with regrets is that they are always at the end where you can do absolutely nothing about it. But so for us to be circumspect as far as purpose pursuit is concerned and taking good kind of action with your purpose, I want us to discuss these seven ways that uh, you can be able to use or seven instances that you can be able to change or leverage in taking action so that your purpose can continue to grow and mature. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Maybe I should give you a warning beforehand because there's quite a bit of noise in the background and uh, people are praying and all that stuff. But my, my voice here is prominent so you can hear me clearly. I'm talking about the seven ways to take, I mean seven ways, seven ways to take action in your purpose pursuit. You know, there is a heaven difference between knowing what to do and actually doing it. <laughs> You know why I'm saying that? I'm saying that because we're living in the most knowledgeable, not necessarily knowledgeable, we're living in the realm or in the dispensation, I should say. We're living in a dispensation where there is access of information at the cheapest value. I mean, all you need is data and the information that people used to pay for, I mean, dollars, millions of dollars, and for a long period of time to acquire that information, it is in our fingertips. If you wanted to get information in the olden days, you will, I mean, travel. But today it is in our fingertips. If you wanted to find out how to make $1 million in one month, go to Google. You will get both legitimate and illegitimate. You'll get original content and you'll get photocopied content i mean you will be spoiled for choice but then there is a difference between knowing what to do and actually doing in the previous series we talked about those guys who were called genius and they were called genius by an author called jay niblick for two things one knowing what they're good at two doing it voila genius that's it and that's good news because you and I can be geniuses in our own respective rights. We can be geniuses. So there's a difference between knowing what to do and actually doing it. In personal financial crisis, for example, a poor person is not one with no money. A poor person is someone who doesn't have the principles of sound financial practice. There are very many people with no money, but with sound financial principles that they are practicing. And it is just a matter of time. And the practices give them the fruits. Notice what I said. It is just a what? It's a matter of time. In other words, there is a continuum. There is a process that things are going to go through. You and I are living in the realm of time. And anyone who lives in the realm of time must 
come to the conclusion that maturity is important and maturity comes from planting and uh, weeding and so on in other words you know the principles you practice the principles and with time they reward you on the flip side of the coin there are other people who have lots of income lots of money that money is coming their way and so on and so forth but they do lack the financial principles that's in the financial world what happens to these guys they are the poor ones I'll give you an example i don't like do, doing this but i give you an example of mike tyson I'm giving you that prominent example because it's something that you can be able to relate with. I don't want to give you my example because you don't know me, you don't relate with me, you don't know that I had some millions or whatever it is. But Mike Tyson was a guy who clobbered people for a living. I mean, in the boxing ring, he would take you out. I mean, he was a knockout machine and he was paid millions of dollars every time he would fight and he had sponsorships and so on and so forth. And he ran into trouble at some point in time, but the man lacked financial principles and i'm told donald trump used to be his manager or something like that but this guy was poor because he lacked sound financial principles and i'm told he would do some silly things like this he would uh, have a suit maybe as a gray suit a black suit a blue suit a yellow suit and so on for every kind of suit color that he had he would buy a corresponding rolls royce i mean he had the money And you know, you can only drive one Rolls Royce once. You can only wear one suit at a time. You know that. So I, I came up with this idea that the, the, the poor person is not the guy who doesn't have resources, doesn't have materials, or doesn't have the fruits. The poor guy is the person who doesn't have principles and doesn't apply those principles. That's the poor person. because you can have the resources and if you don't use the resources properly if you don't apply principles you don't take action properly it's just a matter of time and then the fool and his money they are parted so knowing is not final knowing what to do is not final we must do see earlier on in my life i was so consumed in seeking to know my purpose in life and i literally paralyzed myself trying to seek it as in i will do absolutely nothing the only thing that i'll do is to seek i want to know i want to know lord i want to know i will pray in the city i will pray in the village i will pray while walking i will pray while standing i mean the only the object of my prayer the hunger my friend oh my goodness the hunger i exuded for purpose was out of this world i wanted to know for sure what it is in me what the the full extent of my purpose before i could launch and i came to realize that times purpose revolves around the general theme of a time purpose revolves around a general theme of a time in other words if you do nothing right now with what you have with the little revelation that you have your clarity of purpose might not come at the end of the day it means that you put on activity in your purpose pursuit and as you go along as you keep going revelation comes just like you're peeling you know onions layers upon layers action is important as well as knowledge the knowledge that you do have right now act on it the revelation that you do have right now act on it let me talk to my christian brothers and sisters for some time we jump from one fellowship to another from one prophet to another one pastor to another one man a god to another we're trying to look for high revelation the newest kind of revelation oh god open my eyes let me see and we run from one person who is prophesying who is seeing things in the dark and things in the light and things hidden in the heavens and things hidden below the earth and so on the mysteries we are trying to look for mysteries and the problem is the mysteries that we were told about yesterday we haven't acted upon them we haven't taken any action on the revelation on the knowledge let me tell you if you took just a 
thimble of information and took action on that particular information consistently, faithfully, you are bound to be much more powerful than the guy who is seated in a place and is talking directly to God and is doing nothing about what God is saying. In fact, those guys do exist. They are guys whom God has spoken to face to face or they are guys who have listened to God actually and they have gone and they have created an idol and have worshipped that idol after listening to God, after hearing God God's voice. I mean, I'm telling you. So, revelation is important, yes. But action is much more powerful than the revelation. You can live in the... Lucifer, we call him the devil. Lucifer lived in a realm of revelation. Realm of God. What did he do with that revelation? So, I'm saying that it is important for us, yes, to get information. It's important for us to get hints here and there about what it is that we need to do and so on. But it is important for us to take action. Remember, I want us to talk about the seven ways you can take action in your purpose pursuit. But action with purpose is not just doing anything. In my book, Discover Your Purpose, I talk about the level called stewardship. In the stewardship level, I say that you just use whatever sniff of information that you have and you act on it. You take action on the slightest information that God has given you and you act on it and that's when you're going to come to the aha moment. The convergence of your purpose comes with action. But that action that you take is commensurate to the revelation that you've received. So two things even before we come to a close of this episode today. Number one, know where to act. And number two, act upon it. You don't have to have the full picture. My biggest problem earlier on in my life was that I wanted to see my full picture. I wanted the heavens to part away and to uh, go to appear in a big loud voice like he, he did to one. To Jesus Christ, I think that's the only person that, uh, he, did, that he did that to. You know, and t- tell me, this is me, Lawrence, I've called you, you are my son, and I want you to do A, B, C, and D in this amount of time to these kinds of people. I wanted the full multimedia before I did anything. And as much as I wanted the full multimedia, I was sitting on some relevant information of my gifts and of my talents and of my passion. I was a big prayer warrior. I loved prayer. I still do love prayer. I don't struggle with prayer. I am a wordsmith. At the moment that I was benching, doing nothing, trying to have God clarify to me in full multimedia what my purpose is, he'd already given me hints of what it is and I was not acting on those particular hints. Tomorrow, we're going to start going deeper into this discussion. In fact, we've introduced a discussion where we want to talk about the seven ways to take action in your purpose pursuit. Until then, think about that and bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.